Yeah. yeah, listen, man. You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. Listen, yes, man. Sir. We got T Grizzly back, man. He's not playing. He's coming back, man. There's a lot of robberies going on, man. Yeah. It's a lot of robberies. So he said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give y'all the, 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 the movie of the robbery. You know, uh, the way gave, we know it. The way we know it from so the, much more, though. He gave up a lot. Of de- it's, so, it's, it's so detailed. It's fucking videos. It's unbelievable. It's a movie. I'm talking about it's really a movie, and it's detailed the way he break that stuff down. Like man. creating movies. Man, I appreciate it, man. And, you know? And when, when we say, you know, we extend our, our brand and our, you know, our platform to the youth, you know, we really mean that shit. You hit me and say, oh, can I double back? That's I got no an problem. album coming out. You know what I mean? Because he, he, he dropped a million dollars worth of game last time. That shit was everywhere. Right. Yeah. They took them clips. They just went crazy with that. They just The yeah. game you gave about the gaming industry and how you doing what you doing, Yeah. they couldn't believe the money was made like that. <laughs> That's a fact. That shit went <clears throat> crazy online. That's a fact. That's a yes, fact. Yes, it did. But hold on. Before we go any further. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, today... We gonna do a little something different. New Amsterdam Vodka is introducing Wild Card. You hear me? Look at that. Eight ounce can, the first canned beverage that New Amsterdam Vodka has ever distributed. It's right here, Wild Card, and it's made with real vodka. We not playing no games, okay? There's not no artificial shit going on. No, this is made with real vodka, and it come in three flavors. Original hard lemonade, classic hard punch, and this right here, lemon hard tea. Yeah, look at it. Eight ounces. Look at it. Real vodka. Look at it. Wild card. When you out and about, wherever you at at your local liquor store or wherever they sell New Amsterdam vodka, make sure you pick you up some. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Try all three flavors. Give all three flavors a try. Figure out which one you like the best. This right here is the lemon hard tea. I think I'm about to crack this open and see what it's about. All right. Since we being honest, y'all thought this was water. I already know what it is. It's New Amsterdam vodka. I know oh, what's going what on. I already seen what you did. Threw it in the refrigerator, all type of shit. <laughs> he in his yeah. own. But uh, before we get started, I want to say this. I want to uh, dedicate this episode to PNB Rock. And the reason yeah, of that sure. is uh, T has always been an extraordinary. Rock and uh, T brotherhood is real. You know, sometimes you meet people in your life and you just connect. And they had this connection that, that you know, I will always see them wherever I was there or not. They will always be together, different cities, different whatever, just locked in. And they were just a, it was a real, it was a real brotherhood. I first met T through Rock, coming to, coming to show love. And Rock had a, a Rock and Friends uh, show at the Met in Philly some years back, like 2018. Mm-hmm. And uh, he brought a bunch of people out, you know what I mean? And you came to support and show love, and he would do the same thing for him. Yeah, for you. But, uh, you know, uh, you was at his funeral, it just it's just real, man, and it's always good to see brothers in this game because uh, when you in when 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 you in the industry, a lot of times you are gonna meet some people that might not be from your city or whatever, but you are gonna connect and lock in because y'all going through the same trials and tribulation. Y'all growing in this industry and y'all trying to figure out things. Y'all losing homeboys because people, you know, sometimes people switching up because now you got money, so people looking at you just as a bank sometimes. And then you know y'all y'all can vent to each other. Y'all going through each other, uh, going through different stuff, just coming up in the game, and y'all just locked in so crazy. And y'all was, y'all really had a brotherhood over these years, man. And it's, um, it's just that you know, we always got to keep rock memory alive, man. But like, it, it's just sad, man. You know, tell us what PNB Rock meant to you, man. Yeah, it's it's so rare to find a genuine friendship in this shit, like super rare. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Bro did music, but we never talked about music. When we was together Type shit you know mm-hmm. The nigga lived next door to me mm-hmm. In LA Like right next door Used to throw oranges and lemons In my motherfucking backyard and shit I used to call him Hey man turn the music down a little bit Cause he got the studio the crib You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying Nigga came to my baby shower He came to my people's funeral Came to my engagement party Last month You know what I'm saying All that type of shit He was there He was there for me I was there for him You know what I'm saying That was a real friendship You know And being from Philly And from Detroit Is like Different places, same struggles, type shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was that was like a genuine friend. That was like a real friend. You know? Tell us a PNB rock story nobody know. A PNB rock story nobody know. Damn, you probably got so many. Yeah. Okay, so 
you know, he ain't really drink like that, right? So whenever he was around us and shit, he'd get drunk as hell. Whenever he around us, and he'll always sneak off and go throw up. Bro was a fucking lightweight, bro. Right. Like, yeah, super lightweight. He gonna throw up. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. All type of shit. Another one. Um, we walked in this motherfucking gas station. It was this lady working behind the counter and shit. And you know, every gas station got them CDs in there and shit like that, right? The nigga asked her, he like, is that your CD? The lady working at the gas station. I'm thinking he trolling her playing and shit. She's like, yeah, that's my CD. He like, oh, shit, let me buy it. Gave her like $100 for the CD. Oh, how the fuck you peeped that? I don't even paying attention to the CDs right. back there type shit. Right. Bro was just a genuinely good nigga. And one thing that a lot of people don't know about him, because like, bro singing and shit, so people might get it confused and shit. Like, bro was really like treacherous. You know what I'm saying? And then coming from a city like yours, you go to other trenches and think, this, this ain't worse than my trenches. Right. This can't be worse than my trenches. If ain't nothing happened to me there, can't nothing happen to me nowhere. Because I come from the worst shit. Right. And that was his mindset, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, man. Long live PNB, man. Yeah. Long live PNB rock. Man. Long live. Um, um, you got any unreleased music y'all done? I do. Yeah. I do. Man. I got like I got like five unreleased joints. Yeah. You might gotta, you might gotta put that out there, man. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, definitely put that out, put that out. Especially if it's five joints, go ahead and put an EP out. Yeah, you know, PNB rock EP. Yeah, man. Quick joint for this, for the people. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Definitely, but um, yeah, definitely appreciate that brotherhood, man. And yeah. to see it though, like I seen it up close, so it's just like, damn. You know what I mean? Because everybody needs somebody, especially when you're going through the same experiences. Yeah. This this industry is a motherfucker, man. Yeah. And it could drive you crazy, you know what I mean, if you're not on point. That's a fact. You know, I mean? you, know, you know, the flip side of the industry is that, you know, it's beautiful that he get to meet a brother that come from a whole different city. They, you know, they form a brotherhood. They connect. And, you know, they got a bond, you know what I'm saying, forever, you know, because in this industry, you get so many niggas that leash you onto you when you hot. They want to feed off that momentum. Right. Then mm-hmm. you be thinking, damn, this is a genuine dude. This is a good nigga. I'll fuck with him. It's and my bro. then mm-hmm. you get a little cold, and then you you like, this nigga never answers the phone. Yeah. What the fuck? I thought this was my brother. I thought this was my man. I thought we was, oh, that's only when I'm hot. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see how this shit goes. So a lot of motherfuckers get fooled with that game, too. They come in, they meet motherfuckers. Everybody be genuine when you're smoking. You hear me? When you a motherfucking, uh, when you some rain, some ramen noodles fresh out the motherfucking microwave. They checking up on you every but day? They checking up. Damn, bro, I'm just making sure you good, baby. I see. I'm Listen, I, what you doing out there, nigga? I, I, you, I love you. They tell you I love you before they hang up. I love you, man. <laughs> yeah. Real. You get cold, man. Niggas don't answer the phone. Can't yeah. get a feature. Can't get nothing from a nigga. So it's a lot of niggas. If you that, get cold, they change their number because you got their number. Yo, you, you ever experienced that? Damn. Yeah, the motherfuckers change they, that boy. They change Hell your yeah. number because you got their number. Shit, I feel like niggas change their number just because I had their number. Because you called it, yo. <laughs> what we doing? We jumping in the stew. Next thing you know, they ain't answering that shit. That motherfucker taste go green. Damn, like, damn. Right, but, but see, I ain't even the type of nigga that like. Right, it is what it is. You feel me? Because I can't form an ungenuine connection. So that shit hurted at first a little bit, though. You know what I'm saying? And I was coming fresh out the pri- out of prison, and I'm from the streets. Like I ain't had no choice but to be genuine. Because mm-hmm. if you lie to a nigga in there, you got to see him that day. Yeah. And it's gonna be different. After like out here in the music shit, you lie to a motherfucker, you see him at the awards, some shit. Y'all still shake hands and keep it moving. You say some little shit in your head, like yeah, these niggas fake as hell. Y'all tell but, he tell you he gonna call you again. I'm gonna well, hit you. Why you yeah. ain't you ain't, I called you? Exactly. All but see, I, I'm I just come from background to where. You can't lie to nobody's face because when you see them, it's gonna be something else, you know. Yeah, I mean you 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 stand on what you say. Yeah, facts. You know, you what got mean? To. so if you fuck with a motherfucker, you fuck with them. Facts. But the industry is fake as a motherfucker, man. Yeah. You know what I mean, and that's a big part of why me and Wallow we just stick to ourselves. Like the outsiders, we be an old. You know what? I don't world. even think they being fake on purpose though. That's who they are. I don't even feel like that. I feel like, bro. Niggas is like just tell you anything to your face and just say anything, bro. Niggas just say anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just say anything. Yeah, you'll be and there's no meaning to it. You feel me? You'll be think they be being fake. I don't. I just think niggas, some niggas just be lost. I wouldn't even call it fake. I just say they lost because they probably want to be real and they probably want to do this shit, but 
they just don't know how to keep their word or they just don't know how to like be a stand up genuine person. It's not their fault that they don't know how to do that though. Oof. If you don't know two plus two four, I'm not mad at you for that because maybe you was never taught that. And sometimes it be environmental. Yeah. That's what you're doing in the hood. Now if you was taught that and you acting like you don't know it, then it's a problem. Cause you know better. A lot of these niggas from the streets though, so they do know better at the same time though. Right. That's how I be figuring yeah. it out. Yeah. Like if you don't know better, then that's on you. It's because it, you everybody had the same opportunities. Like, you feel what I'm saying? A lot of yeah. people, you know, it's a lot of people that come from foster homes that made it. There's a lot of people that grew up out here. They ain't had a mom, they ain't dad in their life. They just had their grandma. She was 108 years old. They was only 12. The disconnection was there. They made it. So for me, man, a lot of times, man, this shit don't be about no excuses. I'm not with no excuses. Because my pop wasn't around until I was older in life, you know, damn near an adult. You feel what I'm saying? And I was never no nigga that made up no excuses. So for me, I, I don't, you know, I don't be understanding. Yeah. You know, the motherfucker's not, not understanding the simplest shit. That's a fact. But, but you're right, though. I'm supposed to understand it because everybody different. That's what make the world go round. Yeah. Maybe I should should be a little bit more sensitive to goofy motherfuckers. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. All the goofy motherfuckers, I'm gonna take a little bit more sensitive approach to you goofy niggas. So when you niggas don't say goofy shit and you do goofy shit, yeah. I ain't gonna say nothing about it. I'm just gonna be like And look, you gotta be sensitive to the goofy niggas because you know they goofy. And the yeah. worst part about it is they don't know that they goofy. So if you get mad at them for being goofy, then that kind of look bad on you because they goofy. What else they going to be? You're right. Mm -hmm. I've been fucking up. You feel See, me? See, this young nigga just gave me, yeah, I'm fucking <laughs> up. I'm getting mad at goofy niggas that I know goofy. <laughs> I'm fucking hustling backwards. Yeah. I fucked up. I'm sorry to all the goofy niggas across the world. I apologize. Yeah. I will no longer get mad at you goofy motherfuckers. You GMFs. I will no longer get mad at you. You're right. You see how you, you're you never too old to get game. He just gave me game. My man just had a breakthrough, man. Yeah, I mean, shit. He had a moment. So yeah. I will never get mad at you ever again, cuz. <laughs> I promise you. The fuck out of here. Fucking goofy motherfucker. I will <laughs> never get mad at you ever fuck again. Fuck out of here. So, T, listen. Yeah. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by Owens, Owens Mixers. Mixers. Owens Craft Mixers gives anybody the ability to make high-quality cocktails right at home. Owens is perfect for anyone who enjoys bar style cocktails but don't have a clue about how to make them from scratch. Now all you gotta do is just add Owens. You literally pour your favorite liquor over ice, just add Owens, Owens. and you're good to go. It's that easy. Owen mixers paired perfectly to create the best margarita, Maritas, transfusions, Maritas, cranberry, cranberry blasts, blast, and more. more. And keep an eye out for their brand new nitro-infused Owens Espresso's Martini Mix. Yes. Go to owensmixers.com and check your store located to find that where you can buy Owens near you. If you don't feel like going, getting off the couch, all you got to do is order it on Amazon or get it delivered in less than 30 minutes on GoPuff. Owens Mixers is official, so get the Owens Mixers to make your cocktails right. You know, we come up in the industry when you take it all the way back to hip hop. I grew up off it, always on it. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of storytelling. Yeah. Especially Slick Rick. Uh, yeah. And to see you, like, I don't even, like, you know, I don't even see it as, like, it's bigger than music to me. This is, like, series. Like, you're really doing Netflix series uh, in a music form, mm -hmm. putting it on YouTube, and it's, like, it's, it's a whole lot that go into it. When you first came up with this idea, uh, and do you write the treatments for these joints? The treatment I already wrote. You just got to shoot what I'm saying. Oh, man. That's, it ain't okay. nowhere. It's so easy. You feel me? It's so easy for the directors, bro, because it's like all you got to do is just take these words and literally turn them into life. Well, let's get some, so, shout, let's get some love to your camera, man, because they did a hell of a fucking yeah, job. Yeah, job. man. Shout out to everybody that was involved in creating these videos. You feel me? Ben creating Mark, these shoots. I'm, I'm not even going to say video because... <laughs> I'm gonna say uh, short films, cause they short films. It's like short films. They short films. Yeah, cause I can't short remember films. the last yeah, look, time. Ben I was Mark, excited. Key Motion, and Crave. Shout out to them. Short films for sure. They short films. Shout them out like, again. Ben Mark, Key Motion, and Crave. Right. I mean, 
I feel like this is damn near like not the same thing, but kind of like when 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 Jay put out that what was it called? Oh, not, not, uh, 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 uh. not streets is watching. I think the streets is watching. I think okay, that was you, when he was doing the that, videos. Uh, it, 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 it. When he was in the sneaker yeah. store. What's yeah. what him and Memphis Bleak? That was kind of a story too, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's, absolutely. What, what was that song called? Um, I, I can't Elevation remember. Elevation Sweet. I smoke too much for that. But, yeah. but, but I'm not the hip hop historian. That shit. No, I'm nigga. slipping right now. It's my it's time like a bad to shine. Transmission yeah, on the icy road, nigga. My time to shine. I didn't came up. Put my life on the line. Switch the game up. Yeah, you a hip hop nigga too. Coming to age. Coming to age. Coming to age. Yeah, coming to age. That was like some story shit too. But now listen. You cleaned it up. Now look, the story shit is so much of a breath of fresh air because it's never done today. Only nigga who did it and did it right is Von. King Von. Shout out to Von. Rest in peace of Von. You feel me? He did that shit right. Yeah. You feel me? Got a drop on his flexing thing. He, yeah. he broke that whole shit. And look, it, it, the, the story shit come around often a little bit, but not. it don't get the light it deserves. That's why I want to do a whole story project to show niggas like, this shit is so creative. This shit is a movie. Everybody love a good story. You can't wait for the next episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game, the next episode of Game of Thrones, the next mm-hmm. episode of Stranger Things, mm-hmm. House of Dragons. You can't wait for the next episode. But you know, you know, you know you can't, you know you can't stop now. Facts. Because now you got, it went from just you doing music, you know, uh, when you first did the first robbery in 2018. Yeah. To, 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 to now it's like, oh no, you can't stop. This nah. is, cause, cause now there's gonna be like a show to watch people. So now I'm yeah. saying that like you, the output gonna have to be more because it's gonna be like, or it's gonna be had to put out like when you had to drop it like, boom, like one like eight yeah. at a time or some shit. Yeah, and I don't, I don't plan on stopping. And this is gonna make me drop more often. Now I could drop more often. I ain't about to be making people wait years for the next. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I ain't gonna make you wait like, years. Like, like, like to me, I'm looking at it like, damn, he gonna have to go here. And shoot like eight of these motherfuckers from the rip. He ain't no way. He gotta he gotta go ahead, take some time and say, are we going to wherever you going? We shooting these eight joints now. Yeah, facts. It ain't no in be time in between. We're shooting them now. Facts. So now when you shoot them, it's just gonna be on a whole nother that's a whole nother level, man. Yeah. But that facts. shit is like hard. Facts. You telling the stories like a motherfucker yeah. in the videos. After all, geez, you got you got speaker knockers. Y'all remember them Tony mm-hmm. stories about me? Yeah. Tony story shit like that. Oh yeah, I Meek always was like telling that type stories of shit. too, though. I always liked it, that type of shit. Yeah, you got to give Meek some credit too. Meek was telling stories too. Yeah, yeah. You're telling, yeah, yes, he was. Absolutely. But Meek I don't know. Might, I don't know nobody did a whole story album I'm though. Without it, it without real. it getting corny though. I'm gonna keep it all the way real. Meek might have been the it first get, young boy doing that. Yeah. Telling stories with the Tony story shit, and yeah. then then Vaughn came. Yeah. And, and you know now it's you know but. Yeah. Storytelling is is a different type of art form because it take a hell of a motherfucker to tell you a whole story in the it's process true. and Bro. and keep you indulged in the story that he's telling all the way up to the all end. All the way up, bro. Like still it, has style, still has style. Be spitting with telling the story. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, right. So, now let me ask y'all this: all them videos I just had y'all watch out there, and y'all can keep it a buck with me. Did, at any point in time, did you go, all right? This shit getting kind of corny. No, or, no, it, it had me. Uh, it had me want to do my own investigation as it coming because I'm like, damn, <laughs> you know, as you see me doing my investigation, like, no, this is gonna happen. You figure some shit Listen, out. You figure some shit out too. Because it's just like you know how somebody might see something. They might see uh Ozark and they be like, man, I know next season what's the name going. You you start doing your own personal resource. You be like, this what's the name? God, they can't kill. You, you know notice what I mean? he picked out all the rats. She gonna tell. <laughs> the fuck out of He's a Rizzy. Yeah, you know I, mean? <laughs> I knew. I knew some shit that was going Rizzy on. Rizzy smell Rizzy. Yeah, know? but no, he knew old girl about to pull that gun though. Yes, because he was playing dumb. So, so my whole thing is like, at the end of the day, it's like because yeah, I ain't believe you knocked all her sense out. Yeah, How I you didn't believe. I said she was yeah, lying. You, you knocked her sense out, but she gonna come. She, now she come home, jump right on your dick. Oh, I don't remember nothing, but ooh, our family. <laughs> our family. And then yeah. he on there talking about this is love of my life and all this dumb shit. I'm like, now, listen, let, 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 let me put you in his mindset, right? <laughs> He only in the hospital to make sure this bitch don't remember nothing. Never believe you that. only there to make sure that, like, all right, but I got to be careful. And after some time, I'm going to go ahead. But you didn't stay and kicked it so long that you didn't dare caught feelings. And you asked yourself, like, she survived his head shot and I got back out of prison when I wasn't supposed to get out. Maybe this shit meant to be. Mm-hmm. Let me yeah. try this shit. So now but, you're trying. But, but you're she love. gave you a key. She gave you one key point that nobody's talking about. What was the key point? <laughs> she said, I ain't got no brother. 
Who the fuck is you? Yeah. One thing I remember is I didn't have a brother. Uh huh. One thing I remember oh. me, I don't got no brother. I thought you didn't remember nothing. Who that? See? It yeah. Was yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't remember nothing, but I ain't got no brother. That was yeah. crazy. See, Which, like you, the nigga tried to knock me off, but yeah. I'm going to take you home. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to fuck you good. Then I'm going to shoot you up. Butter out your yeah, biscuit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, tried to, she, she tried to dust you off. Dust your yeah, yeah. But I love, I love too the fact of uh, how you was so detailed. Like when you see you threw in a, you threw in a passion side, put the child lock on. Yeah, I'm like it was just so much detail, and I'm like, yeah. damn, you really like because it, it's like if I'm not looking at it, I'm listening to it, and I can visualize whatever picture that I want to paint. Mm-hmm. That might be different. The girl might be different. The whole scenery might be different. But it's mm-hmm. just like, it was just crazy to me, man. Yeah, that joint was crazy. My nigga got a crazy memory. Yeah, he got I a mean, crazy. He got a crazy thoughts in his mind, yeah, man. Shit, he be putting together. Bro, you see it. You see it every day, bro. Yeah, you feel me? You see it every day. And a lot of people be like, when people rap about this, they glorifying it, right? Now a lot of people say that, right? Now it's the difference between glorifying something and telling you what happened every day. And you can't say I'm glorifying it because who the fuck want to end up like any of these mm-hmm. characters? Right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But this type of shit happened every day, bro. Look how they just hopped on, <laughs> on the nigga at the gas station. Break down some of the stories. Yeah. Break down some of the stories. Okay, I'm going to start with Ms. Evans. That's my favorite. Ms. Evans. I love Ms. Evans. Everybody had a Ms. Evans except for y'all two niggas. Yeah, we ain't had no business. No, Evans. back in the day, I'm going to just say, anybody, he had a, he anybody had a, he that's had over 40. Mr. Evans. Get out of here. <laughs> he had a crush hey, fuck out of here. Anybody that's over 40. Right, he yeah. can't hold what tell you Mr. Evans that they didn't fat have ass. Like, fuck out. Ain't nobody said you yeah. fucking that. If anybody that's over forty would say you didn't have these flawless, beautiful teachers, they didn't have BBLs back in the day. Well, at least they wasn't getting them. Yeah, you didn't have these teachers. Your teachers was old no, ladies. They had BUBs back then. They was older ladies, beat up bodies. <laughs> 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 they was older. They was older ladies, so you ain't even get that vibe. Yeah. So, so Miss Evans. Young boys got them in the school all the time. Listen, the teachers in there, bro, is like now a few years older than the students. Yeah, yeah. seem like that. Some of them like 15, twenty-five. Yeah, some of them like fifteen years older than the students, right? Type shit at the max, kind of right in some areas, and they fucking. Yeah, that's. The I've truth. been seeing them. I see them. I be seeing them on the news going to jail for this shit all the time. All the time. Somebody in this room fucked their teacher. Hmm. Who? Oh man, he bad. He a BMF. <laughs> He's a being he cremated he's a your teacher. Sure. <laughs> wow. Damn, he had life. He was living. Yeah, oh, so that, that type of shit, that type of shit be happening. And somebody in, in my fiance hometown, right? Got like 25 years for that shit. I remember they was put they was giving out a lot of time for that shit. Statutory right. Yeah, they was giving out a lot That's of right. time. I'll tell you one thing's for sure, two things for certain. He love his fiance. You see the fucking rake on yeah, she got her a crazy finger. Ring, yeah. That motherfucker. What is that? hundred and eleven carats. And, and she be she be running she be running executive plays. You see him back and forth. No, you got to do this, do that. She be she's, oh, a, she she's, tell, a, no, what, she's what, executive. What what the what, company? You say, once you put the ring on the finger, there's no. She's his manager. She's the CEO. It's, it's, she was just accounting. telling him what to do in a nice way. You didn't post it. Snapchat chat, baby. Do that. Do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. all right. Ba- uh, babe, babe, right, um, when you get a chance, put it on TikTok. See, she just telling him what to do in a nice way. That's what they do. Once you, once you get all the way in, yeah. they tell you what to do in a nice way. You forgot to put the trash out. Basically, she said, put the fucking trash out, I hear that all the fucking nigga. time right there. You hear me? That trash, we, man. What? But man, you saying to yourself, I'm making a lot to be putting trash. No. I thought this shit was Bro, over. that's what I'm saying. That's how nigga be like, damn, we ain't got nobody putting it out. Who, who's, the, who's the housekeeper? <laughs> right. When the housekeeper and the cleaning ladies, they do the trash. I got to you know what's crazy? I gotta get up and put the trash out. We got the cleaning ladies, right? But she be like, <laughs> We still don't want it to look too messy, though. Like, man, no, 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 yeah, yeah. Up. yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I don't <laughs> understand. Like, I ain't trying to be getting no bad. I don't understand, too, either. We'll stay in the motherfucking hotel suite. She'll wake up and straighten shit up before the housekeeper That's what comes. Housekeeper what do. the fuck is you cleaning up for housekeeper for? Yeah. That don't make no home when they dirty when they cook. That's the fucking what they get paid for. Yeah. To clean up dirty fucking rooms. Yeah. Fuck you making it a little extra dirtier just so they can have something to do. Damn. You ain't playing. No, hell no. They come right you want to know why? Because guess how they do me? Do you want to know how the housekeeper do me? How they do you? They tuck the bottom of the fucking covering at the hotel. 
And I can't even pull the fucking cover up. Oh, that'd be worse when, it, especially when it yeah. get, when it's cold in that on, motherfucker. Bro. Soon yeah. as you get it, you get can't up. you can't get your motherfucking tootsies right exactly, under the bro. tuck of men. Exactly. What you mean? You 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 you, 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 oh, you used to that jail temperature no, anyway. Listen, no, you know what's crazy? I was forty four degrees. I was in the ho- go. I was in the hotel in the land. I can't say their name because they had to cash me out. And I'm in the hotel, so it was a situation like that. So I'm. But every every day I'm like, damn, my feet feel hot, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, I'm like, you warm, whole time it was bed bugs on it. They tore Bite, his ass up, tore my feet up. So I'm like, so I get up, I'm like, something feel funny. So I go, I go to walk in the bathroom to see my foot. It was a bed bug on my foot. Ooh. I take the picture, <laughs> send it to my lawyer. I mean, shout out to Shay M. Lawson. You got me the bag for that. I sent it to my lawyer. I'm like, what the? That was a little what bag. What was the number? That was no little bag. I think it was, was at the Mexicana. Yeah, right. I was just out the joint. The number. <laughs> was it five figures? No, it wasn't. It was cool, man. It wasn't nothing. <laughs> you know what's crazy? You want to know what's crazy, though? I know exactly who you're talking about. I know the exact spot you're talking about. But they get that nigga bed Georgia? bugs if it did. Yeah. You know, no, 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 you don't. You, you talking about that Motel 6 right no, off? No, 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 I was in no, no Motel 6. No, he stayed at the Mexicana Inn. No, no. This oh, was, shit. Okay, okay. This, this was a name brand. I'm talking about this was the. Uh, <laughs> they serve tacos at breakfast. I can't say. I can't say. I can't okay, say. Okay, okay, gotcha, but, gotcha. But so when I when I go to the thing. You mean you can't say? I just said it. No, that's not <laughs> it. said the Mexicana. <laughs> no, I wasn't that day. You lying. It was in the middle of the city. It was a big hotel. This, I mean, yeah. No, this is back when he wasn't staying in no big hotels. He was still was selling t shirts. Bad nigga, I a fresh big out hotel the gym. You. Fresh yeah, it was $49.99. Okay. They okay. gave me bed bugs in 1500 it, Beat it, chair. When, when your song first popped? When did the song first My song first, first popped in 2016. Yeah, it was right at, it was in 2017. Okay. So, he had just got out of No, jail. I just came out. This is the big hotel. I got out in 2016. You got out in 2016. As a matter of fact, you know who got the hotel for me? PB Rock Manager, my man Mutt. Yeah. I'm like, yo, man, I got to Shout stay. out to my put him in a Mexicana win. No, this was no Mexicana. I said, I'm staying in this joint. As so, soon as he walked got me in, the guard was still. in the lobby. Who's all there going to leave? No, no, it wasn't no motherfucking man. They should be tight and clean. Fuck is you talking about? Yeah. This was this was a this was a, a supposed to be OT, OK hotel, right? Yeah. And this shit tore, I'm talking about, when I say tore my feet up, and they was, it was bites out. So I go down to the... I go down, hey, why I go they downstairs. just eat your feet? Bed bugs being a whole bit because you got the fucking prison feet. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. No, they ate my motherfucking feet. <laughs> you got yeah, the I ain't gonna lie, they do get man. you in the arms and back and all that shit. Yeah, they, they get you but in the But they just places. ate his feet. They got my feet, man. Ate my feet. I go down there, I show the dude the picture. He tells him, oh, come here. Come here. He, he was he was not trying to let me... Oh, we gonna go up there, right? We're moving you in another room. This that third. I said, here, talk to my lawyer. And oh, my supervisor, they were scared to death. She got me that, yeah. like this. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's lit. That's lit. Yeah, so so the hotels... They want the cash runs to get you. you, know, you, 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 you now, two things you got to watch when you go to a hotel. There's two things. You got uh, you got the, the beds be, should be filthy for real. You got to get that red, that black light shit, right? You get the black light. I'm you telling ain't you, never got that shit. I had it one time. It, it scared me. That, that ultraviolet yeah. light? That shit scared me. First right? of all, I ain't gonna lie, that, the dirty bed is so... Ter- that shit like betting on the Eagles. But yeah, though, bro. What? Yeah. Oh, what the... F- he was just going to chip. No, I'm fucking with that shit. I'm fucking with that shit. I'm fucking with that He was going to the chip this year. We beat the no. shit out of us. Uh, Not the Lions. The, yes, we did. What year? This year. He ain't even playing attention. He ain't even team. paying attention. Nigga out there in the LA listen. game. No, and he, listen, listen. He don't even know his football season. He running right to me. What year? They said they said they ain't you about to. the Lions? They ain't about to. <laughs> yeah. They said they ain't doing that no more. <laughs> they ain't doing what no more. Look at this. Nigga, nigga wife cracking the fuck up. He making so much money off a of game. Like, we just like, played I've never the seen Lions. this nigga watch no listen, football. We just played the Lions last year. This nigga week. was with the Rams when, last year. When you ain't played the Lions. I'm going to just say this. If the Lions really wanted to beat him, they would have. Yo, if if my sister my, had a dick, she'd have been my, my brother. brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I got that from you. I didn't hear some of with that. He want to yeah. tell me if and shit. You know what I mean? All this if and all that. So you, you trying to go off that I, shit? I, I know. I know you die hard Eagles. You die hard Eagles. Yeah, that's my team right now. Fuck he ain't, nigga. Die hard. That's my fucking team right now. I know you got a lot of different teams though. Like how you be mixing up with the shorts? No, 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 no. Let me just tell you something. The way he pick his teams is the same way he pick the niggas. He hung with in prison. What that mean? <laughs> the Jamaicans start a motherfucking riot. He right over there with them. Rude boy, get out. Meet yeah, on the down script. Yeah, whoever yeah, running the scene, the, I'm with him. The Puerto Rican niggas, with they controlling the jail. He in there speaking Spanish. Oh, like, yeah, fuck with the so you, you, okay, so you on a bandwagon side. Yeah, when, when he's a winning, blender. Okay. When he, he's winning, I got to fuck with that. He, he, okay. he, he what we call in Philly a, a blender. Yeah. 
Uh, I fuck with the winners. Yeah, you know I mean he's a blender. You gotta, you whoever, gotta fuck with whoever, winners. whoever winning, he gonna blend in on their side. You know what I mean? But the Eagles, I was at the last championship where we won. I was at the parade, me and him. So, you know, but it's like I'm, I'm rocking with the Eagles right what now. Was the T. city like when they won that shit? Bro? It was off the hook. He was running down the street, stripping his clothes off. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> It was just unfucking believe. He was. I was like, "Oh, cause you can't get naked." There's a parade. He's like, "You don't know what this means to me," because he's a diehard <laughs> fan. He was ass naked at the gas station. I'm like, "Yo, what the fuck?" He grabbed the pump. Ah, I'm like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Oh, you was turned up like that. He was turned up. He was bought. <laughs> don't you believe this? All he had on was a pair of Timberland boots <laughs> and a wave trucks. cap. I don't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> he was tripping. I'm like, this nigga is a lunatic. Man, all over some sports and shit. But no, man, like. <laughs> <laughs> like like T This the whole thing You're changing the game You want to And then you be in your own world crazy. What what's the matter Cause you stripped out That's normal You do be You be doing shit like that all the time <laughs> See cause he used to smoke PCP When yeah. he used to smoke the PCP <laughs> And you know what I mean <laughs> he smoked that. He used to strip out all the time. He used to come get him. Yo, your cousin out here tripping again. Yeah. He have his clothes, clothes folded sitting on the corner. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You got your drawers on. <laughs> you ain't defending it, though. No, man. I'm not defending it. No, just, no, him. He ain't defending no, it. No, he's not. He's fuck, I'm not lying. Why the fuck? Who, 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 right there. What is part of the company well, she run? Mill. That's my manager. That, why is she laughing that fucking hard about me for Because he know you was stripping. You strip out, fold your clothes, get butt naked. Don't you he believe that, that dumbass naked. shit, Miss Manager? Yeah. He used to smoke that He's butt a naked. fucking nut. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, it's like you know, at the end of the day, you you, you changing the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing your thing. You got a good management team. And you got your business together. When you came out in 2016, one song, here it is. Years, I'm talking about years later, six years later. How did you? So many people came and went, fell all fucked their money up. How did you not fuck your money up and stay in position for this long? Like you, dudes, I just seen dudes come out and they was bigger than you. Mm -hmm. Out of here. Mm -hmm. Some of them working the motherfucking Target right now. Yeah, I saw him up there on a the register. You know what I'm saying? See, the, the the way I didn't fuck it up, I just kept making it. Mm. But you was fucking it up Yeah Ain't none of that money that, that, Still here no more I just kept making it How much you fucked up The first year When that song went That first year I'm talking about On drip On jury or All just, of it On All just of the it. team Everything How much was it Shit it was a couple Hundred thousand oh, That ain't bad And I ain't never had A couple thousand But you give a nigga that That ain't never had nothing It's gonna go mm -hmm. so It's out of there He gotta get that off You had to get that off Yeah and Gotta check, get it out your system Check this out. I'm still kind of getting it out of my system. But look, check this out, right? Uh -huh. I never had nobody to call. Y'all niggas probably didn't either. Uh -uh. What to do with this? His first advance, he went and bought a half a brick of Coke and snorted it. Yeah. So his joint was different. He was like, <laughs> I got to do this. Scarface. He snorted, he snorted a half a brick. He said, because Scarface, he said, I'm going to get this half. He, he snorted half, and he had another He had another four and a half. He smoked that. He yeah. got that cooked. He got some 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 some, rock, some hard cooked and look, smoked it. This is going to let me know if you tell the truth or not. Did he share it? I wasn't there. <laughs> okay. I just knew he said, man, listen, I'm going to be in this do, hotel. Do, do you think he shared it? No, he was in a hotel by himself, paranoid. Nah, I believe you. Because I asked a nigga to hit the blunt. He told me, I'll roll up. Damn. Yeah. I can't just hit the blunt. You feel me? Well, I'm there on the couch. He said, cuz, I'm going to be in this motherfucker in, in, this, in this hotel. Don't let nobody come in. Yeah. Well, and all I kept know, seeing. One the Mexicana in, nigga. I was out. I yeah. was outside in the parking lot, and he just kept coming to the window next to Yeah. <laughs> Closing the joints. Yeah. <laughs> they after me. They coming. I'm like, he calling me. Coming where? Who? Well, no, he look, was check, paranoid. Check it out, though. Me, me first getting some money, it's like it's like, your, it's like my first time skating or my first time riding a bike. You going to fuck up. Especially if you don't got nobody to call. What the fuck to do with this? Especially if you don't know about taxes till it's time to pay them. Or you don't know about credit until you it's time to see about getting a house and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like... What you just Some of us just find out A lot of shit later And some of us Don't make it to find it out Cause we out the game In six months That's a fact Motherfucking then ran through a M Out the game Ain't build his credit up He spent anything with cash Yeah And you sitting there like this You you know Now you finally got it together Cause you, you, your wife Your registered nurse or something She's like Baby we gotta get this house She's like Alright let's go get it Your credit score is zero mm -hmm. You ain't never had no shit in your name You went and bought the car Cash money So you ain't build your shit up Mm-hmm. White, but but the you know what I you know what I learned about out here though, and I told one of my homies out here, and he and it, and it fucked him up. He came home, he like, yeah, man, I'm out here do my thing, we give the homies. They going, I said, don't get with the homies, get with the women. He said, what you mean? I said, 
They the ones that are going to put you in the credit game. They the ones going to give you the whole game, what bank to go use. They know all the cheat codes. It seems Thanks. like women know all the fucking cheat codes out here. Yeah. Whether you go get with this bank, you get with this credit union, you do this. I'm talking about you could just stop a woman and be like, listen, how do I get my credit together? They be fucking credit special. Oh, all you got to do is do what you got on there. Pay this, do this, get this card right here because I'm just a random woman. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, uh, and, and a lot of us don't even get that. You got motherfuckers running around in the streets, you know. I knew niggas that was running around in Mercedes Benzes don't even have a social security card. Mm -hmm. They get money. They know how to hustle and get money, but to be able to get your life right. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of to times. To get functional, get some functionality yeah, in your shit. I think structure. a lot of times we don't prioritize. The paperwork meet the paperwork, so you got to get your paperwork right. And getting your paperwork right is, damn, let me get my social security, you know, my birth certificate. Let me get my license. Let me make sure I got this. I, oh, if, I'm, if I'm running around, I'm a rapper, I got to be an LLC. Mm -hmm. It's not me. They're not paying me. They're paying my furnishing company, bang, which is the LLC. Mm -hmm. I got to get me an accountant. You know what I mean? I got to make sure my publishing. I got to have sound exchange. I got to have this. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, motherfuckers, man, when that money hit, only thing you worry about, nigga, I got 300 bands in the closet in that Timberland blocks, I went to Icebox. I just spent 70. My wrist looking like nice. All the bitches is in my DM right now. Mm -hmm. I got this new motherfucking Benz out here and it's Corvette and it's, it's a wrap. You're like, man, you ain't can't nobody tell you shit at that moment. This episode of Million Dollars Wait, Worth of Game is brought to you by, by Mint Mobile. Now to all those big, you know, wireless big companies ones. all over the world. Providers that forgot that, uh, you know, families come in all shapes and sizes. That's why Mint Mobile decided to shake up the wireless industry the with up. their brand new modern family plan. Each line starts at $15. $15. That's a little 15 $15. Little funky little 15, $15 bucks a month. That's not nothing. That's nothing. You feel what I'm saying? And you only need two lines to get started. No matter how big or small your family $15 is, a month. you deserve to save on your wireless service. For anyone who hates a phone bill, Mint Mobile offers wireless for just $15 a $15. month. $15. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family, and Mint Family starts at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk, unlimited. text, unlimited. high-speed data unlimited. delivery, and nation's largest 5G network. Plus, Mint Mobile's modern family plan lets you mix and match your data plans so everyone gets the right amount of data that they need. Use your own phone with your Mint Mobile plan and keep your same number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile now. And cut your cut your you know your phone bill. Slice it down. Fifteen dollars. Slice it down. Slice and dice. Fifteen dollars. All you gotta do is go to wireless plan. Fifteen bucks a month. Mintmobile.com slash slash game. game. Fifteen dollars, man. Fifteen dollars. That's all you gotta do. You get your new wireless plan for fifteen bucks a month, including a modern family plan. All you gotta do is mintmobile.com slash game. Just imagine if you got four family members, it's only sixty dollars, bro. I know. Sixty dollars? I know. That's crazy, man. Mintmobile.com Mint slash game. game. Cut your wireless bill to fifteen bucks a month. It's just like that. Right. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game, Ben the Spotlight, where we give to you the news you can use and we yes. get you off the couch because, you know, Gil was a couch warrior at one Shit, time. No, I he was an extraordinary couch warrior. He didn't know what he was doing. He was, he was a watching. cell warrior. Yeah, I was. I was in a cell, but I had like five different gigs. I was gigging. <laughs> I was in jail gilling. I had like five different gigs. But today we got my man Justin P on here it's from Support Black Colleges. And what he going to do is he going to give you a free class on how to get in the game, man. How to get that merch popping. Yes, how to get that clover line popping. Because he already got his stuff popping. You can see it right here. You done seen this logo everywhere. You done seen them brand everywhere. Right. He's not playing. What you need to do right now is go to M. DWG.VIP. Yep. MDWG.VIP. You're going to get a free class. He's going to give you a free class on how to get in the merch game and make it happen. He's somebody with proof of concept. Mm -hmm. He's not somebody that's just teaching you that never made it happen. He done made millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars <laughs> off of, you know, support black colleges. And you see what he got going on right here. You've seen his logo. I know you've seen his logo. You could have got a better size than that. No, I like the size because I could chill in this one of them joints. You could just you could sleep oh, in it. You like, be on he the like feel like a woman. Airport. He like feel like a woman when she got a big hoodie on now. I want to rock an oversized hoodie. No, you can not ass Let me tell y'all something though. If he give you this game and you in the clothing business and you don't know how to elevate your clothing brand after you get this game. After Justin give you this game? I'm going to just tell you this. It ain't on us, nigga. <laughs> it's on you. It's on you, baby. That's all I'm going to tell you. Don't blame us because we give you the information. 
to get you to the next station. You hear me? It's like a train. We get a, we get the news that you can use. Yes. So you can get them blues. I'm talking about the monnets. Them blue faces. Yes, sir. So, so if you don't, if you miss the train, nigga, and you show up late. Yeah. <laughs> That ain't on us, Nick, because we give you all the information you need to know, Nick. That's on you. Now, listen, man. Justin, yep. 2012, you get in the game, support black colleges, you start up. Tell me what happened. How did you get in? Uh, what did you do first? How much capital did you have? Right. Did you have partners? Like, give us the game. Yeah, so in 2012, when we first started, I actually wasn't a part of the business. My business partner, Corey, and his cousin, Kai, started the business. And I was just a friend of Corey because we went to Howard University together. So I was in the first photo shoot, made him a Twitter, did a few things for him, just helping out. Fast forward to 2018, Corey was like, hey, we're going back and forth. You know, we in it sometimes, out of it sometimes. I want you to jump in this business with me and really take it to the next level. I was working a job. I was living in a one-bedroom apartment with five people. So I was stacking up a lot of cash. Damn. And, yeah, it was crazy. So, mm -hmm. But I was younger at the time, so it was cool. And I stacked up enough cash. How oh, would you sleep on the bed or floor? Yeah, it was, it, was, oh, it was bad. It was bad. So was um, funk it was like. One on the one in the bed, four on the floor, so just like trying to make it work. Salt um, vinegar chips. Nah, in it was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> and but the thing is, was I had my own apartment, but my family contacted me and they was like, "Hey, we messed up right now. Can we come stay with you?" So I just felt oh, obliged okay. to you know help my oh, family. Wow. Out. I thought you okay. were saying it was so, five young boys. Nah, in there. nah. <laughs> so right. I stacked up twenty six thousand dollars from my job, working it for like eight to twelve months. Put sixteen thousand into Bitcoin, crypto, and stuff in twenty seventeen turned out to be a good investment and then the rest of it i moved to atlanta and invested into support black colleges and i had two pennies in my bank account after i spent my last ten thousand. i didn't know how i was gonna pay rent didn't know how i was gonna eat that day but i just went all in on the business and that was uh four years ago and then now to date we've done a little under 10 million dollars in sales for in the last few years mm. that's major yeah. so what do you teach and it and this once again go to mdwg Dot VIP and you go yes. get a free class. And this free class, yep. what are you what 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 ingredients are you giving them to win? Oh yeah, we're gonna give them all the sauce. So if you're trying to get into the clothing space or just online space in general, selling stuff online, I'm gonna give you the three secrets that you need to take your business to the next level to go from where we started at zero to getting into like Macy's, DTLR, Jimmy Jazz, Urban Outfitters, like the game A to Z from top to bottom. So if I'm Johnny Johnny do nothing, right? <laughs> and I go ahead and find me a um Sell screen printer. I get me uh, some shirts printed. I start right. doing my thing. I start popping. I go from selling 25 shirts a week to 1,000 shirts a week. Yeah. You got the ingredients to say, listen, I can get you in the Jimmy Jam. I get you in the Macy's. Yep. I mean. Start the, to start the bottom. So if you even if you start in with $100 or less, I can show you how to get into the game. You don't even need thousands of dollars like I had when we first started. You can get into the game with $100 and really make something Just happen. Just an example. What, what can I get with $100? If Perfect. I can. Perfect example. If you get a Shopify account, because that's what I, we, we do our business on Shopify, you get a Shopify account that's free for the first 30 days. And if they come to the class, I'm going to show them how to get a 120 day trial for free on Shopify. So four months to really start getting things shaking. Damn. So that's one. And then um, I'm going to also show you how to find products to sell. And then you can get products to sell and then you can sell them because this is the thing. Let's just say you got $100. Let's break it down for real. You got $100. One, you get a Shopify account for free. That's free of charge. You get a domain for your website, $10, $14 maybe. Now you need a product. You can find a product for free, but then instead of buying it from your manufacturer, you could buy it from Amazon and then have it sent to you two days. So now you have your product, you got your website for free, and all you got to do is start putting out content to drive traffic to your website. And you did that for under $100. Damn. That's crazy. <laughs> and, and, and so this is the whole thing. Like, How do you go about it? How, you know? Even with y'all still staying alive and the creativity, how do you be like, because some people do have clothing lines, but they don't be that creative. Yeah. Do you do you outsource the graphics mm -hmm. or what yeah. do you do? So I found a little hack and I'm going to teach this in the class as well. And actually, I want to do this for y'all's people as well. So for anybody that does opt in to come to the class, I'm going to give you a- MDWG.VIP for the free class. Yeah. And anybody that opts in to come to the class, I'm going to give them a list of 70 designers that I personally use in my business. So if you aren't that creative- I'll give you a list of who we use right now today for free. So so you can hit them up on Instagram. Hit them up on Instagram. And the way that I do it, this is a little hack. So basically when you go on Instagram, you can go to the search on Instagram and you type in .std and that's going to show you everybody that has a design studio. So then, oh. yeah, so you can do it now. So there you go. 
Go right here and put. Put dot std. And then it's going to show you a bunch of accounts. Go to accounts. And then it's going to show you a bunch of folks. Oh, okay. So now what you oh, can do is. Shit. All these can, design studios. They're all design studios. So now you can go through each one, look at all of the stuff that they made in the past, and then you could just hit them up via DM like, oh, yo, shit. how much do you charge? And then most of them, they're all from overseas just trying to make money online. So all of the designs I've been getting, $35, $50, $75. So if you're not that creative, you can get a super dope design from somebody that has a design studio for $30 or less. Damn. Yo, this shit is crazy. And they're hard too, bro. They're Look not they're Look not bullshit. They got designs. Letterman jackets, they got anything on this joint. <laughs> yeah, bro. God damn. So even if you're not the most creative, you can still get busy in the clothing space. Right. Yeah. Right. That's unbelievable. You just put us up on some game. I'm saying. So if y'all need some designs for the for the merch, there right. you go. You ain't gotta come out of pocket thousands. You go Instagram thirty five bucks. You go right there thirty five bucks. So so when it comes to like how much should you be paying for a shirt? Because there's a lot of people out here yeah. that's doing clothing. And I ain't going to front. I gave it when I came home from prison. I got in the game, the merch game. Yeah. Uh, selling, like Gil, no, I was selling a shitload of shirts. I go get some Gil in the t-shirts for mm -hmm. $1.75 a shirt. Yeah. Uh, I throw my logo and my movement on there. I'm selling it for $20. Right. Uh, so... How much should somebody be paying? Like, Yeah, so it depends on the quality of shirt that you want. But like you said, if you go to websites like alphabroder.com, tscapparel.com, jiffyshirts.com, you can get shirts gilded in for like a dollar fifty, maybe mm -hmm. up to two fifty. But the trick is that when you go to your screen printer, they're gonna try to buy the shirts for you and charge you a up tax for them getting the shirts. But they're just gonna go to the websites that I just showed you. Right. So all you gotta do is go to the website yourself. And most of, most of the time, like Alpha Broder, they got warehouses all over the nation. So and you they can just go, drop it right you there. Can, they, if you order, they'll deliver it to you next day. Or if they have a warehouse in your area, you can go to that warehouse and pick up your stuff and then take it to the screen printer so they don't add a dollar. Two three dollars extra on the shirt that you get in. So those are that's a list of just a few places that you can get wholesale garments from at scale, and you can get it to your house the next day or the same day if you go get it. All right. So uh, is it important to trademark your name or your company? Because you know a lot of people yeah. don't understand they be having names. Oh, my name's such and such. <laughs> I'm like, yo, bro. Do you like, right. do you teach that in this class too? Yeah, so I do teach that. But one thing I say is like, I always just share my experience. And then also, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't give legal advice formally. But I will say that when we got started in 2012, we didn't get trademarked until like 2016, 2017. <laughs> so we were at risk yeah. doing that. So that was freestyle. If, so if I'm, but this is the thing though, we didn't have money. We was just college kids trying to make it work. So we were like, let's prove the business model first, make a little bit of money, and then go get all of our stuff. But if I had to tell someone right now, I would say, you know, get your trademark, get your copyrights, especially if you consulting a lawyer. But if you asking me what I did, we made money first and then got our trademark because we couldn't afford it. So that's what that's how we did it. And yeah. and what what is the most popular color when you doing merch to sell oh, merch? Yeah. For us, it's been black. You already know y'all boys be decked out in the black. black, black, red, green, purple, and then like a gold, like yellow gold type color. And that's it. But black sell the most. Black sell the most. So if somebody starting off, they best to start off with black stuff and all that. Yeah, I say start off with black. Three to five designs max, and you can you can start getting shaky with just that many. You can just get it rocking. Yeah. Now, uh, are you familiar with the? And I just want to bring this in. Are you familiar with the Shopify loans and all that? Yeah. They, I know they offered y'all some crazy oh, fucking man. money. One time we took three hundred fifty thousand dollars Shopify loan from them. All right. So for people that don't understand about Shopify loans, because I haven't been in the situation, when you're doing a certain amount of sales on Shopify, you'll get a message out of nowhere. You'll go sign into your Shopify page and it'll be alert on there and they'll be like, you had like basically like you, you got offered a loan. And it'll be it was one time it'd be three different loans yeah. you pick. Two. It might be like it might be like seventy five thousand, uh forty five thousand, uh twenty seven thousand. Mm -hmm. And you pick which one you want. The good thing about this loan that come and it's just come from you selling your stuff. Right. Good thing about this loan, you get the loan, like he said, three hundred thousand he took it. They only make their money back because they're taking like a small percentage out of each sale that you get going forward. Yep. So they get their money back when you make sales. Yep. They, it's not like they're taking it back. It's not yeah. like they're going to come to you, oh, we need that money. Where that right. money at? They're not worrying about none of that shit. Yep. Their whole thing is you have a sales history of making things happen. Mm -hmm. So we know that this $300,000, we are going to wind up getting this back. And then when you get the 300000 back, they come back, hey, you want 500000 Facts. Like, I'm talking about it's unbelievable. Like, that's why I love the Shopify platform. Yeah. 
It's um, all you need is that domain. You know, hook your website, attach that Shopify That's to it. the website, and it's a wrap. That's it. And, I mean, and Shopify is crazy because it's like you got hundreds of people working for you. Yeah, they got developers, apps, like the Bunch customer service, all the type of stuff, and you can automate those things because twenty five to thirty five percent of our revenue is coming from automated emails and text messages. Just from return, like they might hit them every day. Every day. So every single day. So you're right. But even with Shopify Capital, I tell people to like make sure that you got your cash flow in line because they are going to take daily percentage of your sales. So you want to make sure that you account for that before you take that amount of cash. So that's the only stipulation I would say to it. Yeah, because they, they be offering that cash like yeah, crazy. Oh, boy, they're going to offer it because they're making money on it. So I already know. Now, so now you're at the point where you don't even take the loans. No more. Yeah, I try to like best I can bootstrap everything from from top to bottom so we can keep everything we got. Now, being though you got the line, right? We already know you got the website. Mm -hmm. What are some of the best ways to market? Because y'all y'all got a different type of marketing because people <laughs> was just feeling y'all shit. Yeah. And it was rocking it and it's quality. Mm. This, this shit is just like Appreciate that. Top flight quality. But but what is some of the ideas? Do you give them ideas or information when you go to, man, one thing again, go to mdwg.vip for the free class. He's going to give you a billion dollars worth of game on how to start your merch company, yes. how to start your clover line. Yes. These are from people that are successful that really done it. They are not just on uh, talking heads on the internet, talking about business, talking about this, talking about money. He actually made millions of dollars from this. Now, uh, what is good ways to market? Yeah. So when I first got started, I always said that there's four different ways. You have paid advertising, you have content creation, you have grassroots marketing, and then you have influencer marketing. So that's what we really started with when we first got started. So I always tell people, if you want to get your first sale, the best thing that you can do is either spend a little money to run some traffic to your site. You can make some content, put it out on platforms like TikTok and get some organic traffic for absolutely free. Or you can get influencers or you can go to vending locations because all we do is like homecoming is coming up. So we'll go to homecoming. We sell HBCUs stuff makes sense to go in front of our target audience and sell Absolutely. them something Absolutely. and that's very cheap for you to do so you don't have to spend a lot of money to get your first sale and in fact if you do it with making content on tiktok you can get thousands of dollars in sales for free i had a student one time 19 years old he had two posts on tiktok he made one more post with the content idea that i gave him post got eight hundred thousand views 19 years old made seventy thousand dollars in seven days damn Crazy stuff going on on TikTok right now. It was just hitting, they were just hitting his page all crazy. crazy. Yeah. Right. And then uh, another guy, he had um, 12 videos he posted on TikTok. Almost all of them went viral randomly. He did $4 million in one month mm. just Damn. from posting organic content on TikTok. It, 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 but let me ask you a question. Who was manufacturing his shirts and his product? Yeah, it was a. He had some a guy over in Pakistan that was doing it. But but was did he have the shipping or did they do the shipping? So he did the shipping. But this is the play that you do. So let's just say you get a design for thirty five dollars, right? You start to make a little content, you get traction. You don't have to buy all of that inventory. So you don't have to go out and spend ten thousand dollars in inventory. You could put the mock up that looks good from your, your creator on Instagram, start running traffic to your site, get some sales, and then use the money that you got from the sales to then go buy the inventory and then ship it to them. So now you could just do pre-orders and you don't got to come out of pocket no money because people think that they got to have a lot of stock to make money. But you don't even have to have stock these days because you could just do pre-orders. Mm. Yeah, that's major now. Give me that, give me that, that, that website. One, one once time. again, and this is what I need you to do, man. I need everybody that's watching this that want this game from Justin P. I need y'all to go to MD, MDWG dot VIP right now. MDWG.VIP. Free class. He's going to give you the game, man. Support Black College. He's been moving since 2012. Now, before you get up out of here, Justin P., what you got to tell the audience? Oh, man. I got to tell them that if you're looking to get started in this game, you don't got to have a lot of money. All you got to do is have the knowledge. And I can't wait to give the knowledge to you guys as people for sure because – Million dollars worth of game, we got to give a million dollars right. worth of game on the class. That's just off right. the rip. So, and we do a free training every Thursday as well. So, I want to give them that free stuff, the the free, uh, excuse me, the free vendors list, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give them the free. Um, designers list as well so you come on here if you don't know what you want to sell i'm gonna show you the vendors that you can use i have 350 plus vendors that i've used by myself right that they can use because they might be like damn i don't know who to get my yeah. stuff from i'm gonna right. show you where to get it from how to get it designed and then i'm gonna give you the complete game on how to do it with less than a hundred dollars talk to me man that's what it is man bunch once again what you need to do you need to hit mdwg.vip get the free class get with my man justin p so he can show you how they did the game with support black colleges man since 2012 they ain't playing this is another episode of million dollars worth of game been in spotlight and it's just like that right well, check this out though right 
Cause you don't learn this shit in school Yeah So a nigga from the streets That's hustling Trying to get some money And getting shit together At what point Do that hit that do, do it click Huh At what point Do it click A lot of times It click at, it click at two Listen And it's sad to say If you ain't got no solid Motherfucker around you A, a sister A brother Or you know A, a wife you, Somebody that's solid To give you some game Or just somebody that's, uh, At a lot of times That shit click right there Like you know On the yard Prison yard Lewisburg Mm-hmm. They click in Lewisburg or they click in the graveyard. Mm-hmm. You be laying there, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being real. You be laying in the graveyard chilling the mo- motherfucker next to you. <laughs> oh, you ain't learned the game, huh? <laughs> you want to tell old head on some real shit. They be in, the, you know, it's this is the same conversations going on in the prison yard, going on in the grave. Motherfucker be like, oh, they got you too, huh? First they get that out the way. Damn, what you was doing, you know what I mean? When you was outside. Man, I was running around. I was doing this, then the third. Oh, damn. What uh, you Rob, doing too much? I, I robbed Ricky and them niggas on 58th Street. And they got me. So, so I'm just saying the realness. So, a lot of times, if you this game is about this. Right now, more than other T, if a motherfucker say, I believe in the I believe in a half an hour, it's like a hundred and uh, probably eighty something half an hour in a year. If a motherfucker get in the bag, all you gotta do What? A hundred and something eighty half an hour in yeah, a year. In a year, some shit like that. I'm thinking of something like that. I mean, I, I'm not saying I, I didn't mean to say that. I'm talking about if you if you get a half an hour a day. There's one half an hour a day. That's oh. 180 something too, like some shit oh. like that. So my whole thing is like this. I believe in this. That's some fucked up math. But we no, it's not. No, it's not. That it matters. Hold on, yeah, let me add that up. Cause, 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 cause 48 half hours in one no, day. No, 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 no. I ain't say a whole day. If you take a half an hour each day, it's 365 yeah. days a year. So that I mean, hours. I mean, put the hours together. My fault. I fucked it up. Don't yeah, worry about yeah, it. I, yeah, if niggas. One thing okay. about me, niggas. I sit in, I in the post. Mass, I was off. Niggas. I was yeah, off. I sit in the post. That post up. You so got whatever. Us out here looking. But what I'm saying, shit. How, however many hours it lead up to hours. Yeah. So it's like 180 hours. Some yeah. shit. But what I'm saying is this: if you get money, we live in the era now. If you want something, there's no fucking excuses. I'm getting money. All I had to do, I could be on the gram all day. I could go to YouTube too and learn how to straighten my credit up. I go to YouTube too and learn how to get a house. I go to YouTube too and learn. I go to YouTube. Everything is online. It's there. I go to Google. Damn, that's how you do this. Damn, I go to Legal Zone. Let me set up an LLC. Take five minutes. Everything I need, I go right on there, open up a bank account. You can walk into a bank. So now the game is just different if you want it. Yeah. Like if you want it. Yeah. Like, and if you got a bag, you go get somebody to set all your shit up. They can set your life up. Mm-hmm. Go take twenty five hundred. Everything be done. Let me ask you a question: mm-hmm. How big of a role did your fiance play mm-hmm. in you? You know, smartening up as far as financial. I because a game. lot of time when you you know when you got somebody that's right there, they gonna tell you when you're doing some dumb shit. Oh, baby, you know why are you getting that car? You already got three cars out there. And you don't drive two like of you, them. Like, but why? What you mean? Yeah. Babe, you really want to spend? Eleven thousand five hundred dollars on that jacket that you're only going to wear once, mm-hmm. like so. A lot of times it be your partner mm-hmm. because they there all the time. They see everything you doing. Mm-hmm. Maybe you still didn't take the trash out. Mm-hmm. You said that yesterday, yeah. But you left right out and you left it right there. Yeah. And so they see everything, all your moves. They know everything you got going on. And if they like your fiance, then your money becomes her money. Her money becomes your money. Pretty much, y'all won. You feel what I'm saying, y'all? Y'all, y'all, unit now. Mm-hmm. So, how how big of a role did it play? Where you know you getting into a relationship slowed you down as far as you know? Well, I, I got to smarten up. It just it made me from being like, it took me from being like I'm on some hustling shit to I'm damn near like elite with this business shit now because my credit like the highest it ever been. Mm. You feel how your shit was 480, huh? Man, my shit, yeah, my shit was shit, 200. My shit was fucked up. They couldn't get a Honda Accord. Okay, so credit. listen, listen. I was I was years behind on taxes because mm. I ain't never know about them. They knocked mm. you in the head. Listen, it was like, listen, it's like just stay, stay right there. <laughs> stay right. Look, I was I was I was years behind on taxes. My credit was motherfucking non-existent. Mm. I ain't I ain't own no properties. Mm. You feel me? Um, I ain't had no assets. Mm. I ain't had no businesses. I had one LLC. Mm. Now I got like seven LLCs. Mm. My credit looked like one of the motherfuckers on Wall Street. Yeah. I got three properties right now. Mm. Three multi-million dollar properties too. Mm. You feel me? Um, what else? What else? What else? I said the credit. 
Got like eight LLCs. I got the properties. Motherfucking um, all type of shit. So you saying? Hold on, man. Fuck oh, cause we interview oh, him. Oh, oh, wait, 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 get wait. up here! Whoa, 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 whoa! Another thing, another thing. I'm caught up on my taxes. Yes. All caught up on the taxes. First of all, listen. We don't play. <laughs> yeah, you see, Claire, that shit up because that's the scariest yeah, shit. shit. Yeah, I'm all yeah, caught up on taxes. You know, taxes send you to jail. First of all, I'm caught up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That shit held to five to ten. Yeah, and I got and I, serious. and I got a savings. You on point? I got a savings. The fuck I'm talking. So, so about. let me say this. Let me say this. She got that nigga so, straight. That's so, basically all he told. Us. No, but right now you she saying straightened me the fuck out. You saying this, T Grizzly, <laughs> that the right woman will upgrade your life in a major way. <laughs> for sure. And your woman upgraded your life. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So if you didn't have her, you'd still be. Yeah, be a basement warrior. No still credit. Be, Fucked all his money up. Yeah. He, Found the way. Yep. Rest in peace to Ani, right? Yeah. yeah he had to try to take Ani old crib over. She fucked with me the most yeah. and all that old crazy <laughs> shit. Know, uh, she ain't putting none of y'all on. Kicked everybody that's living the yeah. Ani crib out. He'd have went crazy. He'd have been a rotten nah, nigga. I would, I would have been winging it, man. He'd have been winging it. But not even just me, though. Like, I can attest for women. Like, not even just me. Like, I got friends who I done seen go from street niggas to businessmen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, turn they whole shit around. So it definitely. Value and having a good one because you know what I'm telling you. Nobody don't believe in you like a woman, man. Woman believing. You know how I many women? Listen. She'll be with you through 82 robberies. No, she'll she, see you walk out of eight day. You're going to do a robbery. He gonna get then right. one day she'll be like, babe, you know, you, Marvin and Teresa opened up a cleaner store. You can do that too. It only no. takes 42,000. Y'all got to let them know too. There. Every Nigga woman like, not like that either. Every though. woman is not like that. And, and I'm going to say this though. I will say this. One thing about women, and I can specifically talk on women from the hood. They talk too much. No, fuck that. They, they <laughs> is extremely <laughs> believers. All right, hold on. Bro. No, listen, hold up. Hold Some up, shit came out. Wait, hold on. Some shit came out what's supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> His truth's coming out. Yeah, like, they talk too much. Too much. <laughs> Yo, shut the fuck up. Oh, wait, <laughs> wait. You want going there? We not going there. But what I'm saying is about women, especially from the hood, they believe in the motherfucker like never before. Do you know how many women in the history of the hood that believe in non-hustling ass boo-boo when he told her, I'm going to flip this tax money. I got you, baby. This the one. We get out. I'm going to get you the baby bins. We going to Hawaii. I'm getting you, I'm getting you, I'm getting you a Cartier Roly. We out of here this time. Mm-hmm. You know how many women listen to that shit? When yeah. Boo Boo talked about flipping her tax money, how mm-hmm. I many women lost their fucking tax money in the hood because the nigga told me he was. And my whole thing is, well, my, my, my cousin, she came to me, he's like, yeah, man, I mean, I said, yeah, because he a hustler. I said, how are you hustling? He fucked up now. A hustler ain't never fucked up. He always going to find a way. You see what I'm saying? Like when two, like when he fucked 2D tax money up that year, <laughs> I'm telling me he was ready to start. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to start selling all. He was. He was ready to start selling fake pocketbooks and shit, like the Louis Jones and shit. I'm going up Canal Street. I'm yeah. going to turn the game up. He didn't make it to Canal Street. He smoked the whole motherfucking tax money up. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? This is the time he was smoking the Rambos. Stop. Hey, listen. She believe in that shit. No, straight you up. You know what I mean? You better stop no, that He was shit. smoking Rambos. He was fucking manager. He was smoking, he was smoking dust, wet, crack blunts. <laughs> and he smoked, smoked the whole... She got like 4,700 back and you used that shit. Like, he was just... This nigga's out of control. He was in jail. He ain't never get a chance to fuck nobody. Tax his money up. He, I'm talking you know about... Mean? He mad. He ain't never get the... You fuck 2D... T- but at least you were admitting that you fuck 2D tax money no, up. No, first of all, let me just oh, tell you something. crack. Let me just tell you something. Yeah, hot coke. Let me tell you... No, I ain't... Two, it was that point in time too. You used to go to work, bring that fucking money home to me. Fuck what you talking about. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Fuck wrong with you. That's how I go so you when you a P. union. Huh? You pushing P? He was pushing P, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm pushing P. Yeah, I mean, I've been pushing P before that was. He was smoking P. He was smoking powder. <laughs> pushing P. He was smoking that shit. The only place he was pushing P was up his nose. I'm pushing P. <laughs> <laughs> this before Gunner and them. Gunner wasn't even born when he was pushing P. He was pushing that shit right up his nose. He used to be from here. He used to push that shit up his nose. His brain used to be like. <laughs> <laughs> He'd been pushing P before Gunner and them. That's good. That was a good one. You love that powder. Pushing that powder up your nose. Shit. He love it. Don't you believe that? This nigga be lying like a motherfucker on me, man. But listen, man. The motherfucking album is incredible. Yeah. You came here today. Got a bunch of stories of lying ass nigga talking about. No, he telling stories. I'm telling stories. We telling real stories of the trenches. It just so happened a lot of your shit is like, I know these stories. Yeah. I know these stories. It's yeah. deep. It's deep, man. Like, 
Ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. Man. You know how I many drug dealers turn crackheads? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> we listen. I we ain't gonna like, lie, like, like 80% of them, though. Like, we was like. And you know what's crazy? Them niggas go to prison and be the man. Crackhead. They, what? They be in there, got all the food, they got all the they stores. They working out crazy. They got, they got the police on smash, all that shit. But him. Crackheads in that bitch? Yeah. He ain't never make it. But when we was like, I remember the time we was like. Because listen, yeah. if you smoke crack, right? To the point where it's, it's uncontrollable and you're a crackhead. Bro, you done you done been to hell and back. Man. He know, he know. So going to jail ain't nothing. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's yeah. why crackheads get there and they run to jails. They already been to hell. This ain't he was, nothing. This is camp. Yep. He was nineteen and I was sixteen. The first time I seen him with a glass pipe, it was like <laughs> the fuck. No, you know we was in the crib. We was in the basement. We was kicking it. <laughs> you looking like you believe that? He shit. Said, Don't you believe that dumb ass? Shit, he had man. the joint. He pulled the joint out. All I seen him was like he had the joint. It was like a ball right here, and it was a pole coming first out. He was like this. First of all, don't ever. That's a damn. That's what the fuck, the fuck is going on. Don't ever on? believe no yeah, nigga lost joint. his virginity in jail, man. Get the fuck out of here, you nut ass nigga. <laughs> don't you dare believe. How old was you when you got locked up? Seventeen, and went, he ain't got no pussy. I got twenty. He okay, didn't get was, no was, pussy was you before, before you got locked up. What? Fuck I was no. a man out here. No, he wasn't. Okay. I, I was him, we he, was running around getting him. Come on, man. He was my BW. I was a What's fucking that? player. He was back my then. bitch warm. I used to let him warm, warm my bitches up when they suck right. her titties, get them ready for me. I mean, I'm lying. 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 I'm what, what your little cousin doing? Tell me he gonna suck my t- No, he gonna warm you up. He gonna get you ready for me. I'll be in there in a bit. He's smoking coke. He's lying. That's from the crack hey. the crack diaries. He gonna do an album listen, called Crack Diaries. Listen, and remember all the shit when he was all smoking his crack. First, all his first happened in jail. He lying, man. I'm dead. Everything is, look at her, look at her face now. Look, yeah, yeah. She ain't don't laughing believe she's Team Wallow. Yeah, yeah, he ain't laughing now. Listen, huh? Team Wallow. She was like this. She team wild though, man. She ain't yeah. going for that bullshit, man. All let, this let first me, happened in jail. Prison prime, everything. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Let me ask y'all this. Prison prime is crazy. But look, <laughs> let me ask y'all this, all right? <laughs> out, of all this, out of all them stories, which one do y'all feel like stood out the most to y'all individually? All right, I'm going to answer this. All of them. I got, I got, I got I'm just keeping opinion. it real with you, man, because yeah. all of them hit in a different way. And all of them was very well written and very well produced. Okay. You know what I mean? And you know me, bro. I keep it real. I say, I mean, this one was my best. I, that one, I ain't really fuck with this for that reason. No, all the joints you played in there, I fuck with all of them. I'm my just nigga. keeping it real. See, it my, was, my it was very interesting. It kept you locked into what's happening next. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then it wasn't lacking in production. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If a motherfucker telling the story and it ain't really adding up, no, y'all, y'all hit the right points at the right time. Y'all showed the right things at the right time. You was rapping at the right time. You know what I'm saying? So for me, all of them was hitting. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure that's how the, the audience going to feel, too. It's going to be hard for them to pick a best one. Out of mine's robbery. Robbery was mine. But all of them have a story of this. The whole storyline is on, on all them joints. Don't trust a motherfucker. That's all this shit is about. But Miss Evans would have been even, I probably would have liked that if I would have got more. It's like, you, you, you don't, it's like, it's uneven. It's uneven to pick because robbery have a, robbery is a whole series. Miss Evans, it was only two joints. So I'm like, damn. Yeah, that's no, all no, I'm just saying, no, be. fuck that. I want to see what's, jail for I want to see what happened when I'm, she went to jail. What we can't do, we can't have it trapped in the closet effect either though. Right. No, no, I, no, I, I don't know. want you to be on part sixty. Like, right. all right, I'm sick of this shit. No, no, robbery, right. but robbery was like that motherfucker having four hundred. You know, on the music tip, R, my man, but he ran that shit in the hole. He was on yeah. part one hundred and eleven. Mister Biggs, get the fuck out! I'm like, nigga, you ain't leave yet. What the <laughs> fuck is going on? Y'all know, I mean, it's crazy. One hundred ninety six. No, like with robbery though. Yeah. This is the thing about robbery. It's so. It's these. It's, these it's, it's a lot more twists and turns. It's, and shit. it's like to me, robbery could go in so many ranges. Robbery could go from a dude on the street that's rapping, doing his rap thing. And now he go sign with a label, and they fucking rob him. And he going to snap. It's just so many ways it could go. But it's like it's based in the street. But it's like that shit look like it could go for. I could get twenty out of that. I don't know. I'm in cap it. But like, uh, I think all of it based to me is just like man, where we come from is treacherous, and like you said, a lot of this shit always end fucked up. Nothing to have a happy ending. And to see and to see robbery the way it was just so many how this shit started going in and out. It was just like but it but like we showed you, it's so much more stories. I can't like I said, we can't wait to see about the 
the girl that grew up watching Instagram, uh, she young. She her dreams is to move to Atlanta. And she went from being a nice, innocent young girl to moving to Atlanta to be the man. To let be, Hayden do the creative, man. No, I'm, I'm trying to get co co creator on this joint. It's just crazy how robberies, how robberies is his favorite joint. A nigga that got locked up no, for 20 years fucking, for two armed robberies. No, but see, and this two is twist. Files. I love this robberies. Twi- no, no, because no. robberies, <laughs> robberies is the longest one. You nut. Just niggas stealing something. That's just something about this no, niggas taking it, something that don't belong to them. No, it was. It was about about one robbery. It was only about one robbery. About, cause right. It was yeah. a storyline of but betrayal. You, them, you said because robberies could go on forever. That was a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a long You ain't never got to stop with robberies. It was, a, it was the longest joint. I'm like, damn, nigga, you done did 20 years behind that shit. The <laughs> fuck you so excited about robberies? You're supposed to be like, yeah, I ain't really fucking robberies like that. They get you the wrong type of time. The joint about when you fell in love. Yeah, I like that one. No, you ain't here because robberies... <laughs> Fuck, snap out of it, nigga. Like you ready to take down a CVS or something. No, this joint got, they say what? somebody want to come on the show. One oh, of your wow. favorite players. Oh, but listen, okay. this the whole thing. It's just the, it just that it was a story that was something to watch. You could sit in the crib, be like this, throw that joint on, and just push play and watch it through. That's a fact. And I think that if it was just built like that as a series, it'd be longer, mm-hmm. it'd be more. But you gave up a lot of detail. I just like it. But I think all of them show that. And when you, when you, when you, when you live in life in the wrong way, Shit ain't gonna come your way. Right. And sometimes it's gonna affect so many motherfucking people that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. At all. Just from close proximity. That's a fact. People gonna go to jail, people gonna get killed, people gonna get hurt. They're gonna just be affected by even what they see and losing loved ones. So it was like, I like that shit, man. Believe that, man. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. So we just wanna commend you, man. New project is crazy as shit. You know what I mean? And uh very creative, man. And the creative process of it did not lose. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't not put a lot of thought into this. That's what motherfuckers could say because this is well thought out. So man, make sure y'all go tap into that new T Grizzly. Yes. Yeah, me. Chapters of the trenches, man. Let's the get trenches, it. right? And then Gil coming out with uh, chapters of a crackhead. It's going to be coming out uh, through T Grizzly label, uh, Grizzly Gang. So be on the lookout for that. I'm collaborating. I'm getting it together right now, doing the contracts. I'm first, signing to first first video right. being shot outside of Mexico. And, and, and don't forget to get yeah, his book. He's going to be. Don't forget to get his book, Prison Masseuse. <laughs> it's coming out ASAP You know what I mean He's gonna show you All the different yoga styles That he teach in prison That they don't know On the streets So And he's gonna show you How to uh, Massage your own ass <laughs> He show you how to get The knots out your own ass oh, And it's just like that Right